need all that stuff. I need it all. By the way, last night's ratings. Wow. 6.87 million people watched that game. Or it's going to be last night. No, the, I think these are the no. over the weekend. Oh, these are over the weekend. These are over Not the weekend. Not the LSU gotcha. versus well, Iowa. That's that's going to be sick. So what was the number? Six over the weekend? Yeah, no, over the weekend. LSU, UCLA got a 3.83 million, but Iowa, Colorado got 6.87 million on ABC Saturday, man. That was a great game. Dude. Even the under 4 million, that, that's better than a lot of World Series games. Yep. Just yep. to give you an, an idea. No doubt. No doubt. Well, last, year, also on last year, the National Championship peaked at 12.6 million Woo! on ABC, ESPN, nearly 10 million. Uh, average of 9.9 .9 million viewers uh, watched that game last year. The most watched NCAA women's basketball game in history. In history. And it may be historic this year if Caitlin Clark gets to the championship, but it's not going to be easy getting by, getting by uh, Paige Beckers and UConn, man. What, what, a, what a tournament. And let's talk to Ryan Rico, who's on a call last night. He's been one of the better ambassadors for women's college basketball. The WNBA finals have been on fire. The West finals a couple years ago with Seattle and the Vegas Aces was really good. Ryan Rico, of course, of the Yes Network, ESPN, the R2C2 podcast with CC Sabathier, our Bay Area native here in Vallejo, California. Ryan, long time, no talk, man. Excellent job last night. Excellent job during the tournament, man. Really doing a hell of a job calling these games, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, last night was Gosh, it was just so fun, guys. Oh, my gosh, it was so fun. We had so much fun watching it and just all weekend long. And really, the women's tournament has been really good. I, I love the quarter system. Once they flip Me the too. format and go into the quarter system, I feel like you, yeah. you've gotten greater play. But the names, the characters, I mean, there's no doubt the women's tournament is blown away the men's tournament just in terms of star power. But I thought you and Rebecca Lobo really encapsulated it. It captured the passion. It captured the moment there last night with the LSU and I win. And Ryan, you couldn't settle in last night because right away, Kayla Clark started draining threes. <laughs> in that first quarter, I got dizzy because I'm saying, how the hell can these ladies keep up the pace that they were playing at last night? It, it's so true. It, it like, I mean, you think about it, right? We're all going into that game with these grand hopes and expectations. And, and what does this young woman do? She hits a, she hits a, you know, 28 foot left wing three boom on the first possession. And it's like, buckle up. And then, it, it, you know, in that first quarter, before you blink, she has 10 points and three assists. And then all of a sudden Angel Reese's, 10 points and five rebounds and a couple of blocks. And it's just like, my gosh, and the pace back and forth. It was the, uh, the most points in a first quarter, most combined points in a first quarter in a tournament game since I think 2018. Wow. It, it was, it was amazing. And that's the thing, right? You know, you, you get the audience there and we're all so excited for it, but then you want, you want the basketball to live up to the hype and obviously the stardom to as well to continue to draw people in and pay off their ambitions and expectations, and it not only pays it off, it exceeds them. Mm -hmm. And we got a feeling that it was going to right out of the gates. It was just, it was remarkable, and it was just, it was just fun. It was just really fun. Yeah, you know, I, I really enjoyed this game, and we've been depressed here in San Francisco after losing the Super Bowl to the Chiefs. And I said to Bonte, yeah. it's like. That might have been the most entertaining game I've seen since the Super Bowl in any sport. Um, and, and I'm biased. Like, I, I've been coaching girls basketball a long time. I got a niece who's playing at a high level right now. And so, I, I'm all in. And, and watching Caitlin Clark and the way that she plays the game and the contrast to the way LSU was playing the game where you have the traditional big and even Moro is, is more of a banger. And just the free-flowing, fast-paced, stretch it out. Iowa offense, I, I just loved the way the game looked aesthetically. I thought it was just a great entertaining environment. What was it like in the actual venue yesterday as you're calling the game? It was incredible, and, 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 I, and I totally agree with what you're talking about, the style. And, and that's credit to Lisa Bluter, Iowa's coach as well, because she just does such a wonderful job of using Caitlin's gravity uh, to create maximum space and cutting and, and Caitlin's passing is as good as her shooting remarkably. And, and so it just, it makes for this just beautiful style of basketball, but the atmosphere was amazing guys. And you know, one of the ways I can always tell, or I, or I try and use as a barometer for, okay, what's the crowd going to be like today is, you know, are people filing into the crowd when it is, you know, the doors have just opened, right? Mm. What's the crowd look like 30 minutes before tip? All, mm. all those kind of things. Well, the doors opened yesterday an hour and a half before tip. And people came rushing down to the bottom of their sections 
wanting to get as close as possible to watch Iowa and LSU during these warm-ups. When I was sitting at the table going through some of our, our elements and our open before tip on headset, we, you know, we sit down as a crew and mm-hmm. we, we go through certain things. I'm looking around. It's already full. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just like, what? We have an hour. We, we actually have like an hour and 18 minutes before tip and it's full. Like it, it, it was, the atmosphere was, was absolutely electric and you could even feel it walking around Albany a little bit yesterday where people were just buzzing, anticipating the start of the game. And, and it felt like one of those days where it's like, all right, when is Tip going to get here? When is Tip going to get here? And and, uh, and everybody in the crowd felt the same. Well, you've got three games left, Ryan, out of Cleveland, Ohio, for sure, oh. which will be fascinating as well with undefeated South Carolina. you got Paige Beckers and UConn outlasting Juju Watkins and USC. You got, Of course, you got Iowa, Caitlin Clark, and NC State, who nobody's talking about, mm. who can light it up from the perimeter as well. I think they're going to give yep. South Carolina a run for their money. Ryan Rucco here on the morning roster on 95.7 Game ESPN. Yes, Network, R2C2 Podcast with CC Sabathia was on a call along, alongside Rebecca Lobo. They do a great job together. Unbelievable job. So the coverage First, before we get to the coverage of the sport and everything that's happened over the weekend, Caitlin Clark and the, and the growth of her game. Ryan, I yeah. was very impressed. This whole tournament, I didn't know she was the playmaker she the was. Floor. The, the floor game, <laughs> dropping dives, cross-court <laughs> passes. Is that, where, is that the biggest growth of her game from her junior season to her senior season? You know what? Her passing has been there a while. It's just gotten that much better, I think, with the familiarity of the offense. She's gotten a little bit stronger. Um, you know, just more and more reps and chemistry with her teammates. But her passing has been elite for a while. It's just it's just continued to grow and grow and get better and get better because this is a young woman who is obsessed with being great. She is obsessed with milking every aspect of her talent to become the greatest player she possibly can. And, and I'm telling you right now, there are, there are three or four times a game where she makes a pass and Rebecca and I just slap each other. We're like, Oh my gosh. Like <laughs> she sees she, my, my dad texts me um, the other day and he was like, it, it's like watching Gretzky in, in the sense that he would see the ice as you guys know, before anybody else mm-hmm. would, right? Like he would just see things before they develop. She really does that too. She had a pass the other day in the Colorado game. It didn't result in a bucket, but where Rebecca and I were just, we were literally jaws dropping she she turned and with she, and spun and threw a pass, knowing exactly where Hannah Stokey was going to be without ever having eyes on her. Not like a no look where you you knew the person was there, but you but you no looked it. Like literally, she had never ever looked at Hannah Stokey, but knew she where she was going to be and just fired behind her back to her right on target. And we were just like, oh my gosh. Um, but she does that multiple times a game. Her, her get ahead passing is incredible. And I say this, her range, we have never seen before in the women's no. game ever yeah. much, much like we had not seen it before Steph in the men's game, right? It's completely yeah. unique to Caitlin in the women's game. The things that I think remind me of other players in the best way is she's almost an amalgamation of Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi in this regard, Sue's passing, especially her get ahead passing and then Diana's ability to shoot off the dribble. And so you add those two, you know, all time greats together, and then you add in her range, which is unmatched, and you have one show stopping star. Yeah, there's no yeah. doubt about it. That I was telling B, it reminded me of some version of Larry Bird and Steph Curry, just in terms of getting to any spot on the floor any time that they wanted, um, being able to hit from anywhere. And there was a sequence that reminded me so much of Curry where you've got Angel Reese in the backcourt. She's going in transition, and Kaylin Carr kind of just slows up ever so closely. And here comes Angel Reese because she's got to defend the three-pointer because she could rip it at any point. And it's all to set up a passing lane for one of the trailing players coming down. And that's where I want to lead you to is I thought Iowa yeah. surrounding cast did a great job in this game, moving mm-hmm. without the ball, finishing around the rim, um, hitting buckets, boxing out. I don't know. I was thoroughly impressed with, with Iowa's team game yesterday. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. You know, and even Addison O'Grady coming in. She was banging. Then, yeah, she really was. <laughs> and, you know, and like against against two of the best posts in the country in Reese and Morrow and being able to hold her own after Stokey got in foul trouble. You know, Stokey, it was interesting talking to uh, Lisa Bluter yesterday. She said, you know, Stokey is so soft-hearted. Tonight we're going to need her to be steel-hearted um, <laughs> because 
because she knew with all the hype around the game, you know, it, it would be so easy to get frustrated and discouraged when you get blocked by Angel Reese or when you, you get scored on by Morrow. And, uh, and, and you could see Stolke even at the end, she had that sort of exclamation point and one on a Caitlin pass late. And you could see her really let go of the emotion, which I thought was even a, a, a sign of, of emotional growth from Stolke um, in this moment. And, and, and then Kate Martin, who they consider the glue of this team, was terrific, doing all the little nitty-gritty things, defending wonderfully. She's such a great leader, and she ends up putting 21 points up. And Sydney Falter, sneaky, sneaky big player for Iowa because she had been off the bench all season. Molly Davis gets hurt on senior day. A Falter slides into the starting lineup, and she has played wonderfully and is confident. And, mm-hmm. you know, for Caitlin to feel like she can – you know, pass you the ball in big moments. She's got to believe that you're confident. And, uh, and Sydney is that we saw her hit that driving layup against West Virginia in the second round when the game was tied with a little over a minute to go. And, and so they all came to play yesterday and, and they also, they just, they understand the cutting, the screening, mm. the timing, they understand all of it and how to make Caitlin at her absolute best. Ryan Rucco here on the morning roast on 95.7 The Game. Ryan Rucco does a great job for ESPN and the Yes Network, R2C2 podcast. A couple more for you here, Ryan, as you get ready to go to Cleveland, Ohio. Fly J. Johnson was special for LSU. Angel Reese, we know about her play in a pro spot, pro prospects. I was a little, uh, I guess, befuddled by the defensive strategy by Kim Mulkey, and we know how controversial she is, but I, I don't want to ask you about that. We'll leave that for another day. But Van Liff was on an island. Poor girl. Garden C- Caitlin Clark. What did you think about their defensive strategy against Caitlin Clark? I thought they'd throw more traps at her, more doubles at her, maybe press her a little bit more, but Van Liff, <laughs> poor child, man, was left on an island, and you know, she was barbecue chicken last night. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree. That was a really tough spot to put Haley Van Liff in. Um, Van Lith also has been sick. So, you know, who knows if, if that yeah. affected her motor a little bit, she's mm-hmm. in incredible shape, but that might've affected her motor a little bit, but no matter what, that's going to be a, a, an impossible assignment. It's basically an assignment that no one defender can take on, but you kind of saw a blueprint West Virginia, the way they pressured Caitlin with four really physical, fast perimeter defenders. Um, not every team in the nation has that kind of personnel to do that. But Flaugier Johnson's incredible. Yeah. And I was really surprised that LSU did not spend any time putting Flaugier on Caitlin. Now, their idea was Caitlin's going to get hers no matter what. They're, you know, they, all, they have been preaching, hey, she scores 30 and wins. She scores 30 and losses. What we need to do is we need to make sure nobody else goes off. So with that philosophy, their idea was having Flaugier elsewhere and thinking that, hey, if Flaugier guards Caitlin, Maybe she's going to get into foul trouble quicker, although, as it turns out, she ended up in foul trouble anyway. Or maybe she's going to, um, you know, Kaylin's still going to score on her, and now all of a sudden they're they're weaker in other places. But I I just feel like there was also, you know, there's times where Van Lith is going under the screen and the big is in drop coverage, so there's no one near Caitlin. You know, like, it was was really, it, it, it it was curious the way they went about it. Now, of course, Caitlin's so great that she may have rendered any defense meaningless and, and just found a way to win last night. But I, I do think if I was LSU, once I saw the way things were going, and, and their, their, their response to Van Lith was putting in last year Poa, who last year did a pretty nice job against Caitlin in the national championship game, forced a couple offensive fouls, right. um, and, and is a good defender. But last night, uh, she, she struggled with Caitlin as well, and – and, and I, yeah, I, I probably would have given Flage some time. Yeah, no doubt. Before we get you out of here, did we all sleep on Paige Beckers in UConn? Because I thought the job, oh. Juju got her, Juju Watkins is special. I mean, she is smooth. And she's only gonna, she's a freshman. And I, that was a hell of a game uh, up in Portland. But I, I thought UConn and their defenders did a hell of a job on making Juju work. I think she went like eight minutes in the second quarter without even shooting a basket, without a field goal attempt. It felt like we slept on Geno, Paige Beckers, and these UConn Huskies again. And I think that matchup against Iowa, which you're talking about, Ryan, is maybe they could implement some of those things that West Virginia did against Iowa. Yeah, you, you, you know what? I, it's going to be a really interesting matchup. You're right. Everybody slept on Paige. And the reason is just the injuries, right? Yep. We never really, we didn't really get to see her fully in her sophomore or junior seasons. We, we, we just didn't. You know, we, I mean, in her sophomore year, 
she did still end up in the national championship game, right. but it was like a, a, a reduced version of her who was clearly still not a hundred percent dealing with injury rehabbing last year out the entire year. So I, I think it was easy for people to forget just how good she was her freshman year. Remember when UConn and Iowa played in the sweet 16 pages, freshman year, Caitlin's freshman year page was, absolutely the better player on the floor that day. Now, Caitlin's game has grown a ton since then, uh, but Paige is reminding everybody how wonderful she is. And I think regardless of the result on Friday, people will come away from that game saying, oh, we get to see another year of Paige Beckers at UConn, and she, along with Juju, will kind of carry the flag that Caitlin's held this year in, in college basketball. So, I mean, UConn, between Nika Mule, K.K. Arnold, and Paige, they can definitely um, put some pressure on Caitlin on the perimeter. Uh, and, and then Ali Edwards, who's going to be uh, likely a top five pick in the WNBA draft as the big in the center, who's really good. As long as she stays out of foul trouble, you know, UConn's going to be a really tough game for Iowa. Um, but Iowa still has Caitlin Clark, yeah. and that means they have a great chance every time they step on the floor. Man, what a Final Four for you guys over at ESPN. Incredible. South Carolina yeah. going for an undefeated season. NC State, the Wolfpack, shocking everybody, blowing out Texas, beating Stanford. I'll ask it up at Portland. And of course, on the other side, you get Paige Becker against Caitlin Clark. UConn against Iowa. The women's game in great shape here, man. I, I, it's so cool to see the women's game get their proper respect. I feel like the tournament's been really good for a long, long time. And now, finally, you got the star power, you got the viewership, you got the eyeballs, you got social media and you ryan ruko have a lot to do with that with the way you're calling the games and your passion for not only the women's basketball tournament and the ncaa but also the WNBA as well and that game continues to grow we can't wait to get it out here in the bay area ryan thanks so much for the Thank time you, on short notice man continue the great work we'll be listening uh when you call the games in ohio cleveland ohio this weekend Thank you guys so much for the kind words. I so appreciate it and, and just honored and, and love getting to do what I do and happy to talk with you guys anytime. Absolutely. Ryan Rucco Thank here you. on the Morning Roast. We'll talk some baseball with him later this season.